It's so good to see you again. I'm so excited to see this one through to release now too. It's about time. It's been it's a different world before Corona when you were it, doing things in tight and close spaces. I Crazy feel times. like I, I hold the Sundance experience near and dear now because of it. I keep uh, looking back at pictures and just trying to like relive yeah. the moment. I know, so. I remember then. <laughs> Did you find that it was a challenge getting your first feature off the ground or did your other work and your past accomplishments uh -huh. give you the momentum that you needed to have folks believe that you could direct your first feature? I'd say that I spent so much of my um, time making films, doing kind of short films and commercials and art pieces. And I would say that they didn't particularly help. However, before I did this film, I did Tickle Monster, which was a short narrative piece. And that really did help um, convince people that I can, I can shoot something. Bringing up Tickle Monster, it makes me want to ask you about what you like to do during the casting <laughs> process. Cause you got, a, you got a great ensemble here. And I'm also a huge fan of Rianne. So I don't know, what are the pillars of your process when it comes to filling the roles and how do you find such awesome people? I mean, I I wish like it was all down to me, but we had an amazing casting director, Carmen Cuba, who helped lead the these lead the casting. I'm just fortunate that we find such amazing actors who are willing to do crazy stuff to make something lovely. Um, so I'm very fortunate to have found Chopin with me. They're so good. And I can't not ask you about working with them on set. And maybe specifically, what is something unique that each of them require from you as an actor's director in order to prep for a scene? Oh, Chopin is very methodical. Method oh, my no. oh, God, can I not say the word? <laughs> I think we all um, have that problem a little. <laughs> Met methodical. Chopin, that's it. Chopin carries a, a journal of notes. And he would really dig in. He'd really ask me some really tough questions. And I'm like, damn, I need to, I need to know what I've written. And that's really, that's a pleasure to, to work with someone who really cares about what he's doing and to talk things through with him. And so that's something about him. Wumi, I find Wumi is so good at, she is so emotionally intelligent that she finds the emotional core of anything. And so if something is written and she's not convinced that it's emotionally truthful, she will, she will tell you. And she will, she will happily discuss with you better ways to tell a scene. And I'm very thankful for that. That's, uh, that's with me. To back up a little here, I was curious about the uh, the writing process and specifically about your collaboration with Felicity and Toby. Where did they come into the equation and how did you guys work on the screenplay together? When I was making commercials and art pieces as to no one, I, we used to have a production, no, we were signed to a production company who shared an office with the two producers, Ed and Martin, of this film. So every time I went in, I'd see them, we'd talk about me wanting to make features one day. And one day they said, we, we had this project um, with Felicity and Toby about immigrants, but telling a whole story about the immigration um, process in this country. And for whatever reasons, I think they were hitting a wall that it wasn't going to, it wasn't quite where they wanted the script to be. So they asked me if I would pitch them my version, my, my take on it. And so I told them that I would make my idea of having it be much more psychological about two people and how they are processing their trauma and I guess how to survive after surviving. And they liked it, so I wrote it and we, and we made the film. Was there any particular element of that that you could call maybe your break story moment? Because there's there's so much going on here, the big picture, the tension in their relationship, the, the Night Witch. What was the thing that kind of brought it all together for you? We did so much research before writing the script. And one of the things that really I really found really rich was in the in the 
asylum process in this country, they would often give someone, the government would often, often give someone a house to live in. But by getting the house, you have to follow these really draconian rules. For example, you're not allowed to leave the house. You're not allowed to have a job. You're given a very small amount of money weekly. And this seems such a um, cruel and cold way to treat people who are trying to come to terms in the, of the new home and moving forwards in, I guess, their new life. And, and I felt like, especially in the, in the horror genre, in the haunted house genre, this seemed, this seemed a particularly rich scenario to be in when you're forced into a house that could be haunted, but the, you're not able to get out. And that was, I guess, the moment, that was the kernel, the beginning of the, the story, the film. You nailed that combo. To wrap up here, now that his house is finally coming out, is there anything about your experience making the movie that you think you're going to take on to future projects, whether it's finding uh, similar themes or ideas you want to keep exploring, trying new technical things, anything at all? I really enjoyed mining myself. I say enjoyed is not probably the right word. I think it's really important to really dig deep in yourself when you're writing something. And I, I hope that I can continue doing that for my future projects. I'm rooting for you and I believe it's gonna happen. Thank you so much for your time today. And I think we're chatting again soon.